Like Jigoro Kano studied two forms of jujitsu. You had the first one being Tenjin Shin Yoriyo Jujutsu, mm. the second being Kitoriyo Jujutsu. The scrolls of Tenjin Shin Yoriyo shows a lot of the staples of today. The they show side control, they show closed mm. guard, they show rear naked choke, they show Jujigitami. So I believe the the transition, like even to the like we do today in Olympic judo, was from way back then. So, but I'm talking about he wasn't very good, like as in, you know, surviving minutes and minutes on end. That's what I'm talking about. But yeah. in terms of doing a successful throw, continuing it with either a submission or a really solid pin, mm -hmm. he had that combo. That's uh, that's old samurai stuff, basically. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, but really, Gracie is, in my opinion, with the whole, like the, the people that came from the, I would say, Kyoto schools, Mm -hmm. uh, and really rolled with them and uh, crafted them and uh, helped them give, like, for example, like, Elio Gracie was really outstanding. Like, if you see his bouts with the Ono brothers, mm -hmm. he threw him over 30 times. And then when they would go to the ground and really, and then would stand up and he would throw him again, stand up, throw him again. Uh, and he couldn't even tap him once. So um, mm -hmm. I'd say it's due to Gracie talent, but also... The, the whole thing with being minutes and minutes on end on the ground also came from the Kyoto lineage, like the Kyoto students that went to Brazil and also coupled with Gracie talent. Yeah. No, you know, that, fighting IQ. I would say Elio had a great fighting IQ. Yeah, that. I mean, I even that mentioned that Helio-Gracie match where he got thrown, I don't know how many times, and then was able to just, you know, pass him out unconscious by, you know, utilizing his guard and all of that. Now, a guy like Helio who... Got his, Are you, no, you're talking about Kato, like the Kato yeah, match. The Kato match, yeah. No, no, I'm talking way before, like in the early oh, no. 30s, um, when he went up against Ono. Ono, yeah. He, the guy was training a triangle, etc. So the guy knew submissions, so he yeah. wasn't, you know, he, he. But at the same time, he knew how to throw, mm -hmm. and still Elio survived against him. I find that match one of, like, it's the most underrated match in my opinion. Like I'd say, like he threw him around 34 times. Yeah, if you can send, uh, if you can send that any, if you have any footage of that. No, ah, okay. there's news. No, see that that's the early 30s. That makes me interested because a guy like Helio, who comes from the lineage of Maeda, right? But then Maeda is totally separated from the Kozen judo schools in Kyoto. So, in Kyoto, no, no, there's the, the Maeda lineage. Yes, it came, they learned, but then they moved around. I believe in the 1920s, they learned more under uh Donato Pires, yeah, and then uh, I believe uh. Um, that you had Jo Omori, Jo Omori, in my opinion, that what really gave them their like the bulk, I would say, um, when hmm. it comes to not only just stand up but also ground. Uh, Omori hmm. came later after that, and uh, you know, Dr Drysdale said it once. I I forgot where, but he said that if there's anyone that should be really credited for giving the like, Elio and Carlos like a lot of good stuff, it should be Jo Omori. Hmm. So yeah. it's not so much so I'm uh, like Maeda because Maeda was like an indirect teacher. Yeah. Uh, Jacinto Ferro taught him, but Jacinto was trained under Maeda. And then mm. they left, they moved because uh, they left Belém do Pará for financial uh, reasons. They settled in uh, Rio, uh, Rio de Janeiro. And then they learned under uh, Donato Pires, which was a hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor who, who was trained under Jacinto Ferro. So it's the um, like a, like the not the first like the you have two guys after Maeda training them and not Maeda directly. So a lot of things were more uh, towards the stand up. You know he was in the police, um, uh, Donato Pires. So it was more about self defense and really stand up. That's why I would say the idea of self defense and really giving it a lot of time and drills came from the teachings of Donato Pires. But in terms of judo or competitive. It came, I would say, from a lot from Gio Mori. Do you think there's a the reason why there is because of the secretiveness of like these techniques? That's why there's a lot of how clear is the evolution of it, right? Mm. That we have to go on these really deep journeys of discovery yeah. to figure out where yeah. 
stuff came from. Like, you know, we even talk about, you talk about, you know, knee bars and, and leg locks being done, you know, you know, before the turn of the century. And now it's like everyone rediscovered them now, right? Mm. You know, in the last decade. So it's almost like because it was so secretive, it seems like we have to keep going on this journey of rediscovery. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's secret, but at the same time, um, it's, I don't know, I don't know how to say this, but uh, it's not, it's not like politics is to be right. like mm -hmm. everything in politics, like military uh, meetings between this prime minister or whatever, like everything is documented. So history is just there. But when it comes to martial art, it's really, yes, it's a product of its own society, mm -hmm. but um, the documentation is really, you know, through like newspapers, like our old scrolls or old memoirs, you know, written by, you know, Yam Yamashita or whoever, like the four guardians. Uh, so it's up to us to really compile them and really go through them and to really see what happened. Like now I'm sure you know that history of, you know, just people learning judo in Brazil is far more complicated than, you know, we are when we first heard about it. Obvious, yeah. I mean, that's, that to me is like the, the two big pieces in my mind of trying to discover this as far as the history goes. Well, number one, let's take history, that, history out of it for a second. The whole method of clinch, takedown, position submission, which is such a huge, you know, um, point to Brazilian jiu-jitsu and a huge uh, method. I, I'm so curious to see if that was developed over time with Maeda and to the Gracies or vice versa, or was it a combination, you know, of the Maeda with, uh, you know, developing it in street fights, that, that specific method of fighting, if you will, you know, that yeah. whole idea and where that came from. That's what I'm kind of more focused on right now, because it's that, that's what for me really changed the martial arts history. And it would change the whole world when Royce Gracie did that in the UFC. And everybody knows that that's what they preach. It's all oh, clinch from the standing, take your partner down. That, where that started to come from, I'm trying to learn, was that more of Maeda showing the Gracies and they, you know, refined it? Or was it the Gracies that really took it? That's like a real big, uh, you know, question. No. Uh, if there's, if there's something you really have to give it to the Gracies, I would say it's, uh, it's really ground and pound uh, dissection. They really know how to defend against it. Uh, like the uh, Gracie combatives, Elio mm -hmm. was very big on defending against ground and pound from the guard or if someone is mounting you. When I, when I had my talk with Pedro, he mentioned this. Uh, mm -hmm. But like the, that sequence of, you know, clinch, take him down, you know, uh, immobilize him and then finish with whatever. It's old. Um, let me give you a... Uh, a, uh, an incident that happened around 1912. So Elio was born in 1913. So that a year, like Elio was a fetus back then. So it was, uh, I believe in, uh, in Europe, it was in Europe back when uh, jujitsu masters like Yukio Tani and uh, Sadakazu Uyanishi, they are uh, later on, they, uh, they met with Kodokan and they met Jigoro Kano. But uh, before that, they came from the Yataro Handa jujitsu school. So they had a lot of uh, Kodokan techniques in their uh, in their curriculum. I'd say it was very much inspired. They, like the the origins of that school, it's not that much clear. But uh, like looking from their books, like the game of jujitsu, um, you know Sadakazu Uyanishi's book as well, 1905, you would see a lot of Kodokan techniques. So I would say it had a lot of uh, Kodokan history in it, but. Mm -hmm. The in terms of that school where it comes from, again, uh, I can't find far a, a lot of evidence on it. Uh, if mm -hmm. I do later on, then I'll share it off, obviously. But they were jujitsu basically uh, teachers. They went to Europe. They made money through professional wrestling. They taught jujitsu, self defense. Um, one of his students uh, in 1912, um, he went up against a savat master, you know, French boxing. Mm -hmm. And he did the same thing. Clinch took him down, armbarred him, and won the fight. So this idea of you know doing that, taking the fight to the ground via a very powerful throw, and then engaging in a very good top game is not so much Gracie oriented or Gracie uh, pioneered in a sense. But that makes sense. Uh, makes sense. 
you know? yeah, there is evidence that it's been done before, but obviously back then the media wasn't as powerful like today with the whole federations mm. and TV and cameras. But uh, there is the photo of him armbarring him in 1912. I'll send it to you later on. Mm.